No time for intros. Let's do this. This is ThreatWire. First, a few stories. Another alleged member of Scattered Spider has been arrested this week. Scattered Spider is the cybercrime group focused on social engineering that collabed with Alf V on the MGM hack that took place in 2023. The arrest of this 17-year-old from England was specifically for their alleged involvement in said MGM hack. We may have lost one furry hacker group, SiegeSec, but the vacuum didn't exist for long. New hacker group Null Bulge has emerged with the Disney hack. According to their website, Null Bulge is a hacktivist group protecting artists' rights and ensuring fair compensation for their work. On their website, they've released over 1.1 tebibytes of data from Disney's internal Slack. And yes, I said tebibyte, not terabyte. A tebibyte is a unit of data measurement that uses the binary system instead of the decimal system. I learned this too. This leak of data contains unreleased images, projects, code, logins, information about internal APIs, and more. The data they published is everything they could get their hands on over 10,000 channels worth of Slack messages. Disney has responded, explaining there is an investigation underway. Finally, a security researcher from Red Threat has published a series of blog posts about finding vulnerabilities in traffic lights, including the technical details as well as getting awarded their first CVE from MITRE for their findings. Congrats, Andrew, on the great find and for being CVE of the week. Thursday night was just a normal night for some, but a storm for many in the incident response space. I can only imagine the terror some of you woke up to with all Sev Zero alarms going off. At 4.09 a.m. UTC or 12.09 a.m. EST on July 19th, 2024, a sensor configuration update was rolled out to Windows users of CrowdStrike Falcon. This update caused computers across the globe to start throwing the dreaded blue screen of death. According to the internet, first signs of distress were recorded by Troy Hunt of Have I Been Pwned, who was quickly receiving calls from media asking what was going on. The ball started rolling from there. Discussions started popping up as computers started going offline. Why only Windows-based machines? What do all these machines have in common? Who is attacking who and what is specifically taking down all these machines? Twitter was rife with IR teams, cybersecurity professionals, and enthusiasts alike talking about what may be going on. Early in the incident response period, in a now-deleted tweet, a CrowdStrike director called out the exact broken file causing the booting issue and that it needs to be deleted. The issue stemmed from CrowdStrike Falcon, the company's premier EDR tool. The sensor configuration files, known as channel files, are critical for how Falcon works. The configuration files are referred to as channel files and are part of the behavioral protection mechanisms used by the Falcon sensor. Updates to channel files are a normal part of the sensor's operation and occur several times a day in response to novel tactics, techniques, and procedures discovered by CrowdStrike. This is not a new process. The architecture has been in place since Falcon's inception. The specific file that caused issues is used by Falcon to handle a specific kind of inter-process and inter-system communication that occurs, called named pipe execution. While named pipe execution is also evaluated on other operating systems by CrowdStrike, the file that has the logic error was channel file 291, which lays out rules for Windows machines. The update that occurred at 0409 UTC was designed to target newly observed malicious named pipes being used by common C2 frameworks and cyber attacks. The configuration update triggered a logic error that resulted in an operating system crash. This is not related to null bytes contained within channel file 291 or any other channel file. According to the technical write-up of the CrowdStrike outage directly from CrowdStrike, the sensor configuration update that caused the system crash was remediated on July 19th, 2024 at 0527 UTC. Many computers will require some sort of physical IT department intervention. Another layer of complexity is computers encrypted by BitLocker, where the BitLocker decryption key is critical. For those who don't know, BitLocker is a drive encryption tool for Windows computers, and the encryption prevents the average user from booting their computer in safe mode to delete the malformed file and forcing an update. Bad actors are taking advantage of this outage. A new rat or remote access trojan is being passed around under the guise of a CrowdStrike hotfix. Domains relevant to fixing CrowdStrike were quickly snapped up, typos were squatted, and crypto scams were put into place. 
Given the predominance of how high publicity this outage was, many unsuspecting people are going to be vulnerable to phishing, malware, and other cyber attacks during this time. As people in the industry, it's important for us to share accurate knowledge to those who are less tech savvy. I mean, even my mom asked about it. She wanted to know if this was a major cyber attack. So we really need to make sure that we keep our education up to date and we're letting our peers know what's going on. The outage was global. I can't think of a single country on this planet that was not affected by this outage in some way, whether an actual computer was non-functional or had to interact with a non-functional system. The biggest and most public industry hit was the airline industry. It's come out that many major airlines rely on CrowdStrike's tooling for their systems. Financial industries were unable to execute trades. Even hospitals were affected, requiring surgeries to be canceled and more. The ripples from this global pause will stretch out for a bit, so just remember to be patient as things are getting back in line. Yes, that even means you, who is waiting for your new Tesla but is now delayed due to some production lines that had to be shut down due to blue screens. Many are calling this the biggest IT failure of all time. Microsoft estimated that this outage only affected 8.5 million Windows devices or less than 1% of Windows machines. So yeah, less than 1% of machines running Windows make up our global major infrastructure. The memes that were being generated during this outage, amazing to be honest. I definitely participated myself. So to lighten the mood, I would like to show you some of my favorites. Now what do we do? There are still blue screens everywhere. Rolling out solutions is gonna take time. As I said earlier, the fix is manual and a reboot is required to be executed. There are still many computers out of commission for the foreseeable future as getting high priority computers online is essential. So if you do happen to see a very entertaining blue screen of death, take a picture and share it online. Let's see who finds the weirdest blue screen location. Definitely an exciting week to be in the cybersecurity space. Last week, I asked you what questions you may have about DEF CON as it's quickly approaching. I'm down to answer any questions you may have about it, so drop them in the comments. For example, Mode 5 specifically said this. I'll be at Black Hat and DEF CON for the first time this year. Besides talks and villages, what are your must-see recommendations? So. As for what my must-see recommendations are, I actually really recommend spending time talking to people. Honestly, many of the talks from Black Hat and DEF CON are gonna be recorded and published online. So the biggest value you can get as a first time person there is just talking to people. In DevRel, which I used to do in my past life and my past jobs, we called that the hallway track. Just getting there and networking with people, meeting people in your industry and seeing and learning about what they're working on. That's definitely a huge value add for you. And you might make lifelong friends like I have. Um, in addition, I also really recommend going and doing a lot of the hands-on things that aren't necessarily just talks. Obviously, if there's a talk that you're very passionate about seeing, definitely go see it. Make a note, but maybe probably don't schedule more than one to two talks a day because there's gonna be so much going on and so much to see. Um, and as I said earlier, definitely go do the hands-on stuff. There's a lot of free labs, there's a lot of a lot of workshops to go see. So I really, really recommend going and doing those things. Thanks for watching ThreatWire for the week of July 2nd, 2024. As a reminder, if you want to support this ad-free show, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. If you want to find me online, I'm at ending with Allie on everything, including Minecraft. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.